Welcome to Keystone Tax Solutions. Today I will show you how to complete a return in 15 minutes or less with our Keystone Tax Solutions software. To begin, we will start a new tax return by clicking on the Select button. Enter the customer's Social Security number, then confirm it below. Click on Start Return at the bottom, then click on the Consent Forms. Now let's select the filing status. I will select Head of Household, then click Continue. Next, we need to complete the personal information for the taxpayer, starting with the first name, middle initial, then last name. Next, we need to enter their birth date. Occupation doesn't need to be filled out, but take a look at the additional options below just in case your customer identifies with any of them. Next, we will enter the address. When you enter the zip code, the city and state will auto-populate for you. Now we will enter the phone number. Keep in mind that fields with a red asterisk are required fields and must be completed in order to move forward. Now I will click Continue. The next screen asks if the taxpayer has any dependents or qualifying persons to claim on their return. I will click Yes. We need to complete the dependent information. Once you have their first name, if you press Tab, the system will automatically add the last name. If the last name is different than the taxpayer's, make sure you change it here. Enter the birth date, then their Social Security number. If the dependent doesn't have a Social Security number, check the box here. Next, the software wants to know if this individual is a U.S. citizen, U.S. nation, or U.S. resident alien. I will select Yes. Now we will choose the relationship status. If any of these options identify with the dependent, please be sure to click that box. When ready, click Continue. This screen will show the dependent we just added. From here, you can add another dependent, edit the dependent from the list, or, if you are finished, click Continue. Now we will need to complete the federal portion of the return. Select the taxpayer's income type by clicking Begin. We will select W-2. I will enter the W-2 information starting with the employer's EIN number. Enter the employer's name, then complete the address information of the employer. Once you have input the zip code, the city and state will auto-populate. Next is the wage information from the W-2. Once you have entered the wages and federal tax withheld, the other boxes will auto-populate once that information has been input. If any other box identifies with that taxpayer or is on their W-2, please be sure you select that option. On the bottom of the page, you will need to enter the state information if the state collects taxes and the information is also on the W-2. Since there are no state taxes for this taxpayer, I will select Continue. If there are more than one W-2, we can add those here. We can also edit that W-2 information if we need to by clicking on the pencil. When ready to move forward, click Continue. This will take you back to the Income screen and you can add any additional income if the customer has them here. Once all income has been recorded, click Continue. Next, we will enter the Deductions page. If the taxpayer qualifies for any of these deductions, be sure to enter them here. My customer has no additional deductions, so I will click Continue. Now we come to the Taxes section. If the taxpayer identifies with any of these other taxes, be sure to enter them here. Click Continue to move to the next screen. Next, we have the Payments and Estimates section. If the taxpayer identifies with any of these, be sure to enter them here. Click Continue when ready. This next section is for miscellaneous forms. 
you will most likely use the IRS identification PIN form as well as Form W-7 if applying for an ITIN number. We don't need those forms for this taxpayer, so I will click Continue. The next page covers the Affordable Care Act. If the taxpayer purchased Affordable Care Act insurance, select Yes and complete the premium paid for this health coverage. If they didn't purchase Marketplace insurance, simply click No, then Continue. The system is now letting you know that you have completed all the sections for the federal portion of the return. If the taxpayer also pays state income taxes, you can complete the state returns here. When ready, click Continue to Summary. On the Tax Return Summary page, it will show a summary view of the return, including, in this case, a refund amount of $27.97. This amount does not take into account your preparation fees at this point. I will click on Continue, which will bring us to the Due Diligence Checklist. This is for Form 8857 for any taxpayer that is claiming any credits and a head of household status. The majority of these answers should be yes because it is asking you if you did your due diligence by asking your taxpayer questions to ensure they qualify for these credits. For the question, did you satisfy the record retention requirement? If you answered yes, you will need to list those documents below that you relied on. In this example, we got the W-2, ID, and Social Security card. When finished, click Continue. Form 8867 will let you know if there were any answers that were incorrect. If there were any questions that were answered incorrectly, the box would show up in red and you have the ability to make changes. Since ours are all green, we can click on Continue. We are now at the final portion of preparing the return. This is the e-file page. Here is where you will add your preparation fees and select how the taxpayer would like to receive their refund. Under the Federal Return section, click the drop-down box and select how the taxpayer would like their refund. If you are using a bank product, there will be the name of the bank in the drop-down box once you get approved. For example, if you are using Refund Advantage, you would see Refund Advantage check and Refund Advantage, Direct Deposit, etc. in the box. In this example, we will go ahead and select Paper Check. Next, enter the taxpayer's email address and then click Continue. The next section is the Fee Summary. Keystone Tax Solutions does not charge an electronic filing fee, so leave that blank. If your customer wants audit protection, check the box for Audit Maintenance Pro. You will see a total of the fees. Now, when ready, click Continue. The last section is the Submission page. To add the customer's signature, click Edit Signature and use the mouse or Topaz Signature Pad to have them sign. When finished, click Save. As you scroll down, you will see the federal and state return totals as well as the summary of the fees on the right. You will also see their signature. Now you can print the tax documents or you can email the tax documents to your customer. To submit the return, scroll down to the bottom of the screen. Under the Transmit Return, you must select Mark Tax Return as Complete. Once you have done that, click Transmit Return. That's all there is to it to submit a return in Keystone Tax Solutions software. Keystone Tax Solutions, affordable tax software designed to grow your business.